It's today at Blade HQ. We're here with the Knife Nuts podcast guys, and we're going to be perfect. looking at some custom knives today. So I, I've like, heard it said a bunch. Good. You you buy the the maker as much as you buy the knife. Absolutely. What is up, guys? Today at Blade HQ, we are at Blade Show 2018. We're here with the Knife Nuts podcast guys, Levon yeah. and Jake. Yeah, and we're going to be perfect. looking at some custom knives today. We are, and unfortunately, Zach couldn't be with us. Oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> Startled me. <laughs> I love, before we get into this, guys, what do you guys do on the internet? Oh gosh, I mean, lurk. We lurk mostly. We're on Instagram a lot, and we decided that we'd start a podcast, which is basically a glorified radio show. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's like two hours of knife. Tom Foolery. No more Tom Foolery. No more Ballyhoo. It is. We don't take ourselves too seriously. The nuts part amazing. of Knife Nuts is is pretty solid. You probably should have put like nuts knives, like gun gun the other direction with we the nuts have. first. I mean, nothing set in stone. <laughs> we'll talk after the show. <laughs> like yeah. Okay, guys, you've been around the show, picking up customs from people, like that's snagging correct, them yeah. from their pockets. Pretty much. And that's yep. what we got on the table. What is first that you guys have snagged? So basically we want to start with our co-host, uh, yeah. Brian Nadeau. He also goes by Sharp by Design. Yeah. He's a three-time best... What's he, what's he got? Let's, let's see it. Yeah, he's a three-time yeah. best tactical award, uh, best tactical folder award winner. Uh, this is his new model, the Chicane. Uh, this is a very fancy one done in Dama Steel. And with a, it's actually a Timascus, but it's a non-colored Timascus uh, nice. inlay. Um, he makes these all in his shop in New Jersey. So everything on the night on the table today is customs, right? Yep. Correct. Yep. So with these, the cool thing about the knives that we're going to show you basically is that they'll preview a lot of the stuff you'll see in production knives in the future. Have some cool mechanisms, and even if you can't pick them up now, you'll probably have one or something like it in the future. Love it. Love it. So anything else special about this guy other than it's drop dead gorgeous? So Brian is a machining genius. He's a CNC just wizard. Um, for he every, does some for cool every things. inch, there's there's a hundred hours of, of CNC wow. design, CAD and CAM. And what Brian does differently than a lot of people is he doesn't use a traditional ball detent, if you know what I mean. Okay. So he actually machines his own hit lock bar inserts that have a little shoe. So what happens is is when you when you open the knife, you have a clean flat break, and then the knife glides right back onto the detent as you close it. So you don't get that little awkward close. Yeah. When you go to close the knife, it closes very That's smoothly. Super smooth. Yeah. That's one thing that drives me crazy. Like when you are closing a knife, you hit that detent ball. Yeah. And there's times when that detent ball is really unpredictable. Mm -hmm. That that way That's with amazing. It's a pet peeve with of mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's not awkward closing the knife. It's just awkward talking to him and dealing with him. That's to, just to how get you the roll. If you guys watch yeah. the listen to the podcast, <laughs> you'll see what we mean. Which they had me on the podcast once, so and they, right. they did all like the. All the G-rated stuff when I was on there. We, we cleaned up really yeah, good they for They did, they did. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we practiced. Love it. We practiced. Okay, what's next on the list? So next is another, we'll say friend of the podcast, Mr. Matt Diskin. And uh, this is a mechanism that- uh, He's knife royalty, really. Yeah, mm. a knife mechanism that, that sort of needs no introduction, unless of course you know how this knife works and it is if I can get it to work on it's camera. It's a dual action knife. Dual action. So, so you can open it manually action. and you can use the auto feature. That's now what's cool. cool about Matt is that he's a designer for Kershaw. He's done a couple designs with Kaiser. So his name is out there and his designs like the strobe. He's got a couple other ones out there. Uh, but you've probably, and even if you've never owned or handled a Matt Diskin Custom, you've probably handled something that yeah, he has yeah. his hands in. All of, all of uh, you know, Kershaw's ETs Carbon fiber comes from that that disc. That's amazing. This 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 particular blade show piece has a damascus steel uh, pivot, pivot hardware, which is made. hard, which is beautiful. Yeah, like, those you know, are that's custom. another. Yep. That's the that thing. I, like I picked this up and I started looking at the details on it, and it's like, dang, like the milling in here, the pivot, even the backspacer. It's just. It's a beautiful, beautiful It really piece. is. There's a lot of thought. And, uh, you know, Matt's a legend. He's been in it for a long time. He started making art knives. And he's, you know, a, a true asset to the community. Yeah. Uh, and a so scientist. let me ask you this, guys. I, I'm, a, I'm a cheap sucker. I've established that. No question. Just blue and, and that's and, all you need. And blue yeah. and in the $100 range because yeah. I'm cheap, right? Or that's cost, right? Because I don't, I don't pay, the, I don't pay those, <laughs> those real prices. Why would somebody want to buy a custom? Are you crazy? I mean, it's just, I usually make it akin to art collecting. Okay. So if you're into uh, manufacturing, you're into engineering, you're into art, design, 
this is another thing like that. People collect watches, people collect pens. This is an extension of that. And if, you, if you're used to carrying a knife all the time anyway, it's natural that you start taking that to the next level little by little. Yeah, and buying the maker is, I think, something oh, that's, yeah. that you, it's, may or may not be unique to knife collecting, but certainly as far as this, uh, this culture and this community yeah. goes, it's a very big piece of I, why, I've heard it why said we do a bunch. Do. You, you buy the, the maker as much as you buy the knife. Absolutely. And I, yeah. I mean, you walk around Blade Show, and if somebody's a jerk to you, Chances are you're not going to buy their knife. And on the other hand, I have knives that I don't even like. But I did like the maker enough to purchase from yeah, them. Yeah, totally. What <laughs> else is on the, oh, That's one thing I'll tell you is common with all, with all of these knives. The people behind them are amazing. Yeah, and great that, people. And that's the cool thing about this industry is like I feel like every person in it is just solid. They're all Absolutely. Solid. What else have we got? Moving on, this is by our buddy John Gray. And John Gray is like a Blade Show celebrity. Everybody knows John Gray's not. Andre's he's name in, and he's John in every Gray's photo. Name. He's everywhere. He, can, he is <laughs> omnipresent at every show. Um, everybody knows John's name. People use him to, to learn about knives, to learn to hone their craft, and learn a lot of new stuff. What John is really known for is bringing uh, new finishes to the table. He's always got some new idea when it comes. This has got his barked finish going on. Uh, really, really cool. That's amazing. And then you have. He's also known for his grinds. He's one of the few people that does what's known as the progressive chisel grind. This one happens to be a ground on both sides, but you can see it's got a very wicked shape there, and the action is usually on point as well. I have another really fun fact about this particular knife. This is called the Splitter. I actually named this knife. Do they give you a free one when you name it? No. Dang it. No, none of this yeah. has ever led to a free knife. I will had, tell you that. We had two or three flops okay, before okay, a I have good a name. Yes, exactly. So I worked at CRKT. You guys know that. Yes. Right. CRKT for about two and a half years. One of my dreams was to be able to submit the name of a knife that got the, the, the official name and have yeah. a stick. It's yeah. not all it's cracked up to be. No, but it never happened. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's on my bucket list and I just wanted to name one knife. It you will know? probably happen. I it, guarantee it, it. I mean, we've gotten I, a cease and desist. Or, Once or, or twice. twice. So. <laughs> on the Knife Nuts podcast? Well, what happened was we we named one of Brian's knives. He does a dagger. Yeah. Um, and we called it the Nemesis. Okay. It didn't go over well. Didn't yeah. Go. We called it, but now it's the Arch Nemesis, so it's just a little more evil. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, just a little more evil. <laughs> I love it. No, if, if anybody's watching that makes knives, I'd love to name one. I just, it's on my bucket list, you know? You couldn't get a better I guy. Can, I mean, how, I I think how we could can you make not that have happen. him name Besides, something? If I name Come on, it, knife people. If I name it, then I have to go out and sell it, right? Right. It makes perfect sense. I should really be naming all the knives in the industry. What you gotta do is end up, <laughs> like, at dinner or something and write a little name on a napkin and slide it over. Just slide it over. And see what happens. Mm -hmm. I love it. There you go. What's next on the table? Next on the table is something new uh, by Beg Knives. So this is actually a design breaking from the tradition of Beg. You guys are more familiar with Todd Beg. Beg Knives is a subsidiary of that. Got it. So you have this run by Mark Beg and Mattia, and they make these knives in their California custom shop. This is designed by a guy named Jared Von Otterloo. He goes by JBO Designs. And this is called the Osteo. So this is the newest Beg Knives uh, design. And this one is particularly special, first off, because it is mine. Two, because it has a very cool... Uh, it doesn't, it's just mine. It's mine. I, I'm very happy to, proud to say this one is mine. I love it. And one uh, of the first, isn't it? And it is, it is early. So this one happens to have a really crazy blade finish. It's mirror polished. So they went through the trouble of mirror polishing this whole thing, and then they threw it in a tumbler. That's what I was looking at. So you they, have a stone wash mirror polish. Yeah. Uh, and the action is incredible. It has a, a two-piece frame lock. Here, take a look. Yeah. Perfect for if you're just finishing up a beautiful mirror polish, and then you drop the blade. Yeah, like, yeah. just throw in the tumbler; it'll be it'll so be. I, good. I love this little ball the little ceramic. Yeah, I, I love them clip. too. I, people seem to be wishy-washy on them. I'm a big fan of them. I, I think it I depends think on how much retention there is. I, the ones I agree with that. A little that. more give work really well. That one works. And usually, really well. like just a, not a lot of room too. But what's cool about this too? They have their cracked ice finish on the back, uh, the back spacer, and That's awesome. on the clip. And that's DLC coating as well, so it's a really interesting yeah. dynamic there. I really like this. It has micarta and carbon fiber. I was going to ask if that was G10 or micarta. It, micarta. That's an interesting blend. I think normally those two materials clash. Would clash, yeah. but they've, yeah. they've done it in such a subtle way that it looks super yeah, nice. Yeah, the bolster design on this is part of like its charm. It's really yeah. it brings it to uh, another level. So and everything is done by hand in their shop. Yeah. Really Jake, cool. are you a custom? Do you own customs? Of course. Well, 
What do you look for in a table? None on the table right now. Yeah. What that's, do you look for? That's an amazing question. Um, Other primarily, than the maker, right? honestly, yeah, it's so much, and I hate to repeat the maker, but so much of the way that I interpret how a knife uh, comes out in the end yeah. is the maker and why they make the choices that they do and how, how the knife ends up you know, looking the way it does nice. or performing the way it does. Actually, the next knife is a good segue because Dude, this is- you should be in broadcast this is, because that was, a, that, was that was like the smoothest segue I've ever seen. <laughs> Before I had ever shook hands with a custom knife maker, uh, Grant and Gavin Hawk were uh, just people that I was just fascinated with yeah. because of their ability to just sort of make whatever they need. Absolutely. And make whatever really they want without, yeah. regardless of how big the challenge As was. a matter of fact, it was Blade HQ's video on Grant and Gavin Hawk that really catapulted my journey. If you, that, if you haven't watched that video, you need to watch it. That yeah. Truly. It's like, it was the perfect video. Of all the pieces I've ever shot myself, that is one of my very favorites. It it's a, almost like a tear. It gets you, it, it's very it's emotional. Magical. It's magical. It's magical. Yeah. It's what it is. In the mechanical world, uh, sometimes things are made that maybe we weren't quite ready to afford, but can oftentimes find a way to fabricate a close substitute out of whatever material that we have at hand or close at hand. And so that's mostly what we've done here is just try to make up for the lack of an abundant funding that would allow us to go buy anything we ever wanted. And so instead we make anything we ever wanted. It, it, it was magical to be in their shop. And it, something, there's something so cool. magical about this OTF yeah. that we definitely want to show you. So this is the Grant and Gavin Hawk deadlock. And it's called the deadlock because if you guys have ever handled a regular out the front knife uh, by any manufacturer, there's always a lot of play in the blade. Yeah. It's just part of the gig. If you're making an out the front knife, it's gonna wiggle. The deadlock has no blade play whatsoever. Put it right yeah, up to the mic. Right, yeah, yeah. There you go. There's no wiggle. No wiggle there's right no. there. <laughs> you have to feel it for yourself now. I, and the action is incredibly smooth. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> is. Thank <a> you. <laughs> uh, and what's especially neat uh, for me about this one is Levon has had one of the prototypes, so the first iteration that went out to the public of his deadlock design and the mechanisms inside that, that allowed him to make a, an OTF that didn't have any blade play when it was open. Yeah. He's had that for a few years, and we've just been fascinated by it. Oh, We're yeah. really hoping that Gavin would be able to bring sort of a model to the masses, and yeah. that is, the, they're calling it the Model B, and that's the one that's going out so to nice. Another all the crazy thing about this knife, the number one thing you'll learn about OTF knives or any automatic knife for that matter, they're complicated, right? Oh yeah. So it usually is, doesn't go into the customer's yeah. interest to take it apart or don't, do anything. Don't take, OTFs don't take apart, your OTFs generally. apart. Some of them even Here's come the with crazy. proprietary screws. Which yes. I, I know you guys love proprietary screws. I'm pretty sure it's their their favorite. Thing. It's not a bad thing. I, it makes a lot of sense. But if you it take does. a look at the screws on this, what do you see? They're Torx. Guess yeah. what? T6. You probably. are encouraged to take yeah. this apart and clean He's it. He's got videos YouTube. online to do it. That's right. Which There's instructions amazing. on yeah. how to do it. And it's incredible to see. He's got it down to like nine, ten parts in there. Yeah. Simplicity in engineering is is beauty in engineering, yeah. and he's really got that. When, he's he gets it. Yeah. And I think the other thing I love about this, like sometimes you pick up an OTF and you got to like get your whole forearm into it <laughs> yeah. to open it. And maybe I'm just a sissy. No, that one's it's nice and it, smooth. It is so yeah. smooth, and yeah. I think he solved two problems. One is the blade play, but two is like. Anybody can open this. Absolutely. Even even you can hand that yeah. to anyone out there can open this. Yeah. And even, it takes a lot of muscle memory sometimes to open an OTF mm -hmm. on and off. Yeah. This even, is even Zach while under the table uh, could open that. I knife. imagine Zach, Zach could it. even open this. He's not hey, Zach. Anymore. He's he's gone. Can you open this? Which one? We if can't you, get this thing open. Can I get it to open? Yeah, yeah. totally yeah, failed. Just, Something's wrong with it. Totally it's failed on camera. Just open it. Just open it. He can open it. Wow. Thank you. It's, it was like the sword in the stone. It was really hard. Wait, I'm the king now? You are the yes. king. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we don't bring both of us on this, there's so many people and stuff going on here at Blade Man, Show. It's like, this is our first time It allows us to double show. team. So it is good. crazy, cool. yeah. We're so, okay, of the knives on the table, this one's out. But you already own that. Oh, right, sure. Which one would you take Oh, on? man. I would say it's like picking your favorite kid, but I have no concept of what that actually is like. So honestly, if I had to pick one right out the right out of the gate, I do. Um, <laughs> I have two I'll, kids and a family. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a jerk and I'm gonna go with our co-host knife. Nice. So, That's a good choice. You know. That's a good choice. He won't yell at me later. So the chicane. Yeah. This is actually his first one with a 
3D pocket clip to it. I think that's like a piece of jewelry oh, in yeah. by itself. It's beautiful. What about you, Jake? I mean, you can, you can pick. That. I'm a fan of no, no Papa Bear. Is uh, <laughs> he's one of the reasons that we started collecting. No one else calls him Papa Bear. I, well, now I don't know <laughs> anybody Papa Bear. Call him Papa Bear. <laughs> I can't believe we said that. Anyway. <laughs> How many people have started, <laughs> I, not just collecting custom knives, but started making knives who are now well known just because of Mr. It's John true. Gray? And we do That's call awesome. him Papa Bear because he really has been a mentor to us. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Since he will for take many your years. keys if you've been drinking. Yeah, he it's definitely Papa true. Bear. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I think for me, I, I'm kind I, of I, a feeling. I, I don't know the, which one you're going to go I'm in with. the toss up between wow. these two. I like that blue a lot. I, it's been blue. We should, yeah, we should yeah, have only brought it's blue. It's weird, but honestly, like, I think I'd probably go for the, the deadlock. Deadlock? I just, having been choice. to their shop. I'll give Matt some love now. It's the, it's the maker that you yeah. know. Yeah, you know, of course. And you know him personally. So, True. That's awesome. Guys, this was a riot. Are you kidding me? This, this was is a blast. Great. So, where can they find you? Well, we're mostly hang out on Instagram. Um, I run the main Knife Nuts podcast Instagram. It's just Knife Nuts podcast. Yes. You know, a little at symbol Knife Nuts podcast. <laughs> um, and we all, you can see each of our individual, uh, you know, ways to get us on there. You can also get us at knifenuts.net. Sweet. We have merch. We have all sorts of stuff. But please listen. You might, Sweet. you yeah. might enjoy it. You probably hate it. Knifenuts.net will get you anywhere you want to go. Yeah. I'm Knife Nuts Jake on social yeah. media. And I, I gotta plug you guys. I. I'll go and read your, your synopses of what you've talked about. Oh, I'm like, holy smokes, these guys, along with amazing thumbnails, <laughs> you guys know your stuff, and you, you're like to the minute talking about things in the knife industry that I'm like, how did they even know that? Like, Well, shout out to our buddy Dave, too, because he does all the editing yeah, and writes yeah. all those liner notes. So he's, awesome. he's our co-host on the show, too, and yeah, he, he couldn't be here. He couldn't be here because... I don't really know why he couldn't be here. That's the, that's the thing. <laughs> Fair we're, enough. We're, we're, we're busting on him for that. Fair enough. So, guys, if you want to check out the Knife Nuts podcast, you got all the sure information you. there. You can buy custom knives, maybe not these ones, at this moment at bladeishute.com. That Absolutely. is the place to buy your pocket knives. Thank you. Thank you. Levon, Thank you. Jake, you guys are awesome. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. And that's you. what was up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Very good. Guys, I don't know, do I don't know what to do, do with my again. head. It's like a weird thing. you got to get used to that. Look at that. It was you fun. Just, on camera, you just control your joints. It's all about like keeping your arms and your hands and your shoulders just controlled. Yep. This is why we have faces for radio. <laughs>